today we're going to be taking a look to see if we can save the transmission on this Toyota Camry that got burnt up in the snow. So if you remember the transmission fluid on this guy wasn't looking really good. It's a little bit dark and doesn't smell that good. Now with it all jacked up here, when I put it in gear, both reverse and forwards, the wheels do spin, but they're kind of sluggish with the response and I don't really feel any proper shifts. So there's definitely something that's wrong with the transmission relaying power to the engine. I think my first plan of action is we're going to drain the fluid and drop the transmission pan to see what's going on under there. But taking a look underneath here, this is the transmission pan. We are going to be removing this plug here to drain some of the fluid out and examine it. And then we got to go around and remove all the bolts here, including the ones that are hidden over here underneath the subframe in order to drop the pan. Okay. It looks pretty dirty, but not as bad as I thought it would be. All right, so we're going to let that drain for a few minutes. So next up, I'm going to come around and start loosening up these 10 millimeter bolts holding this pan on. Check out that nice dark color of the transmission fluid. There's like three bolts, one here, one here, and one here on the transmission pan that are pretty difficult to get to. The one under here is really difficult. The solution to this is to get this transmission mount out of the way so we can remove this nut here, jack the transmission up. Hopefully that gives me enough clearance to get to this bolt. But yeah, and life would be better if you had a ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench to get in here. But this being 10 millimeter, I lost mine a long time ago. Okay, I've got a 19 millimeter wrench over here on the transmission mount. I'm gonna try to double wrench this. Nope. All right, let's try this again. All right, we're going to jack it up now. So now with this slightly jacked up, it's supposedly going to give you a little bit more room to swing this wrench and loosen these bolts. All right, so now I'm going to lower the transmission and the pan is coming with it. All right, so with the pan off, this is what things look like. You can see we've got the solenoids that are gonna be located across here and over here. This here is the transmission filter. It's got a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. I'm just gonna go around here and remove this filter so we can take a look at the stuff inside. I'm gonna drain that pan in here so we can have a look at what's left on these magnets. Taking a look inside of that transmission filter, it doesn't look as bad as I thought. See little chunks inside of there. Inside the pan itself, again, it doesn't look terrible. I don't see too many shiny particles in here that I thought I'd see. However, on the magnet, I did notice this little cylinder piece here. I'm not sure where that came from. Now the magnet itself does have its fair share of goop on there. That's just some metal shavings that it's picked up over the years. This one here, you can see, look how much shavings are on that. I'm gonna clean this up and put this back in the car just now. So next we're gonna be removing the valve body. The reason is you can't remove these solenoids while it's inside of the transmission case. So there's about 17 10 millimeter bolts that go around here. There's three different lengths of them. So you gotta make sure you keep track of them. But before that, I'm going to have to try to remove all these connectors without breaking them from the solenoids themselves so we can get the wire out of the way. Now there's about six different solenoids here. you got three over on this side, three over on this side, and then here's your ATF temperature sensor. So i got all these wires disconnected. So now I'm going to go ahead and loosen up all the 10 millimeter bolts that I can see around the valve body, holding it to the transmission casing. Okay, get ready for a mess. Also, there's a spring that's going to jump out. So taking a look at some of the pieces that came out here, you can see there is a small check well here with a spring on it. You got to make sure you put that back in the valve body. There's the accumulator spring as well. Now there are three different sizes of bolts. Luckily I got the repair manual here, but the repair manual is actually backwards. So you got to make sure you get that correct when you're reinstalling this. So I just found this inside of the transmission casing. It looks like a bunch of copper wire bundled over something. It's not even magnetic. Now taking a look at the valve body itself, right off the top here, I can see there are some, that's metal shavings all crusted up here yeah that looks pretty rough oh these are actually non-magnetic now non-metallic shavings means that it's not like a gear like a planetary gear set it actually means that it's some kind of clutch material or friction material we've got all our solenoids in here that i'm going to take out and check if they actually work now this here is the manual valve that moves when you change the gear shift on your shifter make sure that's in the correct position when you reinstall the valve body of course you have to have a lot of my brother's old shirts here that i took from his drawer ready because this job is very messy so i ran two wires from my battery here and I'm just going to go ahead and start testing all these solenoids by 12 volts. I'm going to begin by removing some of these solenoids here so we can clean them up and examine them. Ugh. Should do one at a time so we don't mix these brackets up. I got a piece of my brother's black shirt here. He won't notice because it's black. So all of the solenoids clicked fine. I'm going to use some good old brake cleaner. Spray it up inside of there. So I'll just continue all the way around removing all these solenoids, cleaning them up just the same way. I found this one's got a little screen on the end of it, so I'm gonna clean that up. Alright, now I'm just gonna give the valve body a quick spray down with some brake cleaner. And I'm just gonna come with my brother's old toothbrush here. 
and scrub down this area that had a lot of extra particles. Now the spring sits inside of here but it's obviously going to fall out so I'm going to try to leave it on the valve body and push the whole unit up and get a bolt in there. So after a lot of haggling I was able to get the valve body to go up inside of there and line up with the holes. I used the jack to help me hold it up. Now to get that check ball and that spring to stay in I did have to put a little bit of grease. Hopefully that doesn't damage the transmission and it should just dissolve inside of the fluid. Next I need to follow these instructions here because there's three different bolt sizes that I have to install the valve body. So I've got everything all torqued down. The next thing I'm going to do is connect all of these wires to all the solenoids. Now most of the little tabs here broke so I'm hoping that it doesn't just pop out that easily. Alright now I'm going to clean up this pan here. Just wipe it down. You can see that some of the oil is kind of sludged up inside of here. Better make sure that we take out these magnets here and we clean them. Now normally to replace this transmission filter this is just an experiment to see if this transmission is going to work. We know it's already dead anyways. I'm just going to clean this one up and put it back. If the transmission decides to work properly I'll go in here and do a full service with the proper filter, fluids and gaskets. And as I said I don't really have too much faith in this transmission. Go ahead and replace that filter. I'm going to take my brother's pants here, wipe the gasket surface. I'm going to put that transmission pan on there. Just going to get it up over the subframe. All right, so we got the transmission pan back on, all the bolts are torqued. Now I'm going to try to do a flush on this through the cooler line so we can get some more of that old oil out of there. So I'm going to start by removing this clamp here. All right. All right, so I've got my two lines hooked up here. I've got a barb fitting that goes into the cooler line, and I got another one that goes down to this drain pan over here. Now make sure the transmission fluid you're using says it's compatible with Toyota T4, which this one is. Now I am using the cheaper stuff because I have absolutely no faith in this transmission. But if this were going to be my car, I'd probably switch it out for the genuine T4 stuff from the dealer. See, this is how the transmission fluid should be nice and red. So I fill the transmission with about five liters of fluid. So here I've got the longer hose. Check out that fluid as it's coming out, it's just sputtering out. I'm gonna go ahead and add maybe two quarts or so, and then cycle it again. All right, round two. That stuff's really dirty. I also don't like how the transmission winds for a bit. Look at that, it's starting to come out a little bit more red. Now I'm gonna pour the other half of this bottle here, and that'll be my final fill. All right, last little flush. It's coming out a lot more red. I don't like that sound though. All right, so I can go ahead and disconnect this hose here from the return line. And then I could just go ahead and reconnect that. All right, now we're gonna go for the top up run. Start it up. And just let it run for a bit. And now I'm gonna go through all the gears. Now the transmission is still cold, but with the engine running, we gotta check the fluid level. And here you could see we're actually just below the cold level. So we're gonna add a little bit of transmission fluid. I just finished the bottle, whatever. Have a listen to the transmission noise from the driver's side. Sounds like there's something loose. Hope it wasn't from me leaving something loose inside of here. So I've rechecked the transmission fluid and we're just about at the cold dot over here. All right, next I'm gonna be adding some of this stop slip Lucas transmission fix. Again, this is just a last minute patchwork because this transmission is on its way out. Obviously, if the transmission is damaged on the inside, this isn't gonna do anything. This stuff is super thick and pours very slow. Holy how long it's going to take for me to pour this thing in here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start it up now. I guess that power steering pump wasn't the sound after all. It's more of that transmission whine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let the transmission warm up for a little bit. Now I'm going to leave the car in drive. And I'm going to see if the wheels turn. Yeah, they are turning. Just trying to get it to warm up and get the fluid going. All right, so let's test this out. We got it in park. It revs normally. And now I'm going to put it in reverse. I felt it clunk as if it was going into gear. It does not move. Okay, now we move it to neutral. And if you remember last time in neutral, it used to move forward and it actually is moving forward. And I can speed up and it speeds up. Now I'm going to pop it into drive and we are spinning forward. So overall I'd say the transmission still seems to be toast. We don't have any reverse. Reverse used to be drive before. It does seem to be shifting through some kind of gears while it's driving forward. But neutral is also a drive, so things are still wonky. The engine itself does sound pretty healthy. So overall I think that was a waste of time. Dropping the valve body, cleaning up all the solenoids, 
changing the fluid and giving it a flush still didn't fix this broken transmission obviously something is burnt out inside and it's also making that whining sound which i did think was the power steering pump in this case it's not going away so i might have actually made it worse you can actually hear something inside the transmission humming sort of around the bell housing area i'm kind of wondering if it's maybe a torque converter or the oil pump itself you can definitely hear the sound from under here. The thing is, in order to do a transmission job on one of these, it's got to drop down. There's not enough room to take it up and out through the top, which means that you have to remove the subframe and also the steering rack. And more importantly, this big rusty exhaust, which I'm not equipped to look after because I don't have a torch or a lift. I'm on a little test drive here to see how this car drives. It goes forward, but you got to go real easy on the throttle because it sounds like it's slipping. See, if you gun it, all I get is just wheel spin. Those tires really suck, so I can understand how this thing got stuck in the snow. But at least I got the thing to move. And I can get a feel for this car, how it otherwise drives. Like, look, it's slipping right now, see? And then now it cannot. If I put it in first, I don't have first gear. It's very slippery, it doesn't really move the car. But if I put it in second, the car moves forward. I do look forward to tearing down this transmission to see just what happened inside because the U151E was known to be a good transmission although the person who were driving it clearly abused it and that's what caused it to fail. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next video is going to be and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.